Good evening, Late Night with Dr. Soloway here. I've been asked to speak about dermatomyositis. I think it's fair to give you a little classification rather than just jump into the word dermatomyositis. So the classic teaching of years ago was that we had dermatomyositis, polymyositis, and inclusion body myositis. Those three entities made up what was known as inflammatory myopathy. By inflammatory, we mean it's inflamed, which means certain types of white blood cells will infiltrate the muscle and they will cause inflammation, which leads to the following. It leads to uh, typically a gradually progressive muscle weakness, typically the um, proximal girdles, this would be the shoulders and the hips. A patient will typically be unable to stand from a chair and unable to hold their arms over their head for a prolonged period of time, unable to wash their hair, unable to, at some, po uh, some point in the pro um, progression of the disease, <clears throat> they may lose the ability to breathe because of diaphragm muscle weakness. They may lose the ability to pick their head up off the bed because of neck muscle weakness. Um, they may get double vision due to... Um, eye muscle weakness. They may have trouble swallowing due to the muscles of swallowing becoming weak. So a person or patient um, who has that uh, clinical scenario has now been redivided and subdivided and there's a new classification system which is supposed to make it a little bit easier but was really... Um, built on the um, discovery of antibodies. And um, we used to diagnose uh, myositis in general by the history of muscle weakness, um, followed by getting an EMG, which would show features of muscle inflammation or extra activity. And then we would have a muscle biopsy, which would show classic features of both uh, inflammation which is characterized by the muscle breaking down and then building back up, so-called degeneration and regeneration or infiltrates that are coming and going <clears throat> in different stages of their lifespan. Um, so now uh, things have been broken up a little bit more. Uh, polymyositis has been, uh, if you will, subcategorized to its very small category and that category has been taken over by a named item, um, idiopathic necrotizing myopathy. And the idiopathic necrotizing myopathy, while it looks all the same as polymyositis, will be associated with what is called the anti-SRP antibody and the anti-HMG-CoA reductase antibody. Um, treatment remains the same except those with polymyositis tend to do worse. Frankly, they all do bad. Um, <clears throat> and uh, inclusion body myositis, which hasn't really changed much um, in decades, is a disease that typically affects the distal extremities with distal muscle weakness more so than um, proximal muscle weakness, which is what you have in the other conditions. In inclusion body myositis, it's typically forearms and hands, and it's typically old men, typically old white men. Um, and finally, in that category, we would have dermatomyositis, and we're going to conclude this talk trying to focus on dermatomyositis and how the new classification system, <clears throat> excuse me, has um, helped shape how we think about this disease or how we look for it. So first, it's important to know that dermato means skin. Dermatomyositis means that there is a skin disease associated with a muscle disease, no different than psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, where there is a skin disease associated with a joint disease. So in dermatomyositis, there are classic rashes that have Names such as heliotrope, which is a purple lilac 
uh, vi violet like um, um, ring around the eye or eyes. There are what are called Gotrin's or Gotrin's lesions, which are what we refer to as papulosquamous lesions. Uh, these are on the knuckles. And I say on the knuckles, it could be any bony prominence. It could be on the elbows. It could be on the knees. However, between the knuckles, if you get the same lesions, those are often found in lupus. Now, what's interesting about this particular rash, on biopsy, the typical finding, other than the cellular infiltrates that defines inflammation, there is what is called interface dermatitis, and the interface is where the epidermis meets the dermis. This is another feature of lupus as well. So sometimes a pathologist may have some trouble differentiating, but you're not going to have any trouble because I'm telling you the secrets now. Um, in the dermatomyositis, we will often not need a muscle biopsy. We'll have the weakness and we'll have the classic rash, and then we'll treat the patient with steroids, DMARDs, and if necessary, biologics. And they tend to do very well, and it tends to be a monocyclic disease where you get it, you treat it, you cure it, and it can go away. While polymyositis is polycyclic and it keeps coming back, and the outcome is very bad, but in dermatomyositis, the outcome can be very good. So a couple of other things. Dermatomyositis is common in children, little children. I've seen children five, six, seven, eight, nine years old in my practice, um, although a lot of the pediatricians do not refer to me um, because they am probably not aware that I can treat this um, with the same precision as uh, a pediatric rheumatologist due to my uh, exceptional training. So in children, the children, they do tend to do quite well. <clears throat> Children tend to have um, a couple of distinctions. One distinction is that they, they tend to get calcium formation or calcinosis, where there can be calcium either uh, under the skin or in the knuckles, uh, well, the skin under the knuckles. This is called calcinosis. Uh, adults with dermatomyositis often um, have a harbinger of cancer. So about 20% of patients with dermatomyositis will in fact develop a cancer. The recommendation is that depending on what age you develop dermatomyositis in your adulthood would require a cancer screening commiserate with that age and it wouldn't necessarily mean to scan the whole body in every single person who gets dermatomyositis. Now, there's another form of dermatomyositis which is very important to talk about, classically known as amyopathic dermatomyositis. Amyopathic means without muscle weakness. So it means that you'll get the skin changes that are seen in dermatomyositis, except you may never get the muscle weakness. And this is not uncommon. This is a well-recognized disease. Um, this is not reinventing the wheel. This is something that's always been out there. But what we have is now we have a situation based on the new antibodies that have been discovered in the last few years. Um, we have something called the MDA, um, like Mary David Arthur, MDA5, as in the number five. The MDA5 antibody um, is seen in um, many patients who have uh, what is, I believe, now referred to as uh, clinical amyopathic dermatomyositis, which is basically saying that we now have a blood test to tell you, yes, you, you have this condition. Now, we also have a blood test, the anti-TIF, T-I-F. So if a person has the anti-TIF antibody with dermatomyositis, they have a high risk of getting cancer in the face of their dermatomyositis. While the people with the MDA5 um, they do have other, um, issues, but, uh, it would, uh, it would, I'm sorry, it's more likely that they would get, um, other internal organ problems 
but not necessarily cancer. And then there's another antibody which kind of overlaps. It's called a synthetase antibody. And um, the one that we use practically is called JO1 or JO-1. And this is something that you, if you see this in a myositis patient, with or without skin changes, they have what is called synthetase syndrome, which is usually defined as very severe progressive interstitial lung disease. I hope that this summary is helpful. I didn't mention treatment. Steroids, DMARDs, and often that is curative because prior to biologics, we were still able to cure dermatomyositis reasonably well. Um, kids, kids do well, adults do well. Uh, now, if we have to, we have biologics that we can try. Um, I hope this summary was um, educational for you. I hope if any of my uh, medical students or residents from the 75 countries that this um, video channel is viewed, I hope you guys all find this helpful. I've been asked for several years now to give a little bit of a talk on myositis. So have a great night. Um, I'm a little tired. I hope I've answered your questions. Bye.